Hey everybody, it's Miss Denton. I am back again to give you another art lesson to do this week. I hope that you are enjoying this beautiful weather that we've been blessed with. I hope that you are enjoying time with your family and I am looking forward to the day that we can make art together again soon. So stay tuned and enjoy this lesson. Okay, so today I wanted to do a little landscape art with you. So we're gonna be drawing a really pretty waterfall landscape. So in order to do this, you're gonna need some white paper. Um, you're gonna need either some oil pastels or some crayons. These are um, some color sticks, which are actually really big crayons, kind of an in-between of pastel and crayons. Um, and if you have some watercolor paint at home, that would be great. If you don't have watercolor paint, what you can do is do the opposite and do your outline and marker and then lightly color in your shapes with crayon. Um, so I'm gonna be using crayon and watercolor, but if you don't have any watercolor, like I said, go ahead and use your markers to draw with and to do your detail with, and then come back and color in your background with the crayons. All right, let's get started. All right, so I wanna make sure that I have my paper um, vertical which is long and skinny. Typically when we do a landscape, we would do it horizontal, but because we're doing a waterfall, we wanna be able to have a lot of space for the water to fall. I'm gonna to wanna to do my horizon line first, and it's gonna be high, higher than normal, um, just because we want our sky and our land to meet kind of high at the top so that we have a lot of space, like I said, for our water to fall. So I'm gonna go ahead and start by drawing um, kind of a curved shape. So I'm using like, ma leaving maybe three finger space at the top of my paper and then drawing my horizon line. It does not have to be straight. Remember, waterfalls are usually falling on off the top of rocks. All right, so after I get my horizon line, um, I'm gonna wanna draw some bushes in my foreground. So the foreground is the front part of the paper. So I'm gonna draw um, right here in the front just a little bush and then maybe another one on the other side and then maybe a smaller one kind of behind those two in the middle so there are my three little bushes in my foreground all right next I'm gonna wanna draw a couple of different waves. So typically when the waterfall is coming down, there's usually different levels of rock. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw a couple more lines just like this horizon line that I drew. So I'm gonna draw one up here, maybe one in the middle, and one more down here close to the plants. All right. So after I've gotten those lines drawn across my paper, I'm gonna to wanna to draw the water. So I'm gonna to wanna to start my water line at this first horizon line. And I want my water to be getting bigger as it comes closer to me. So as I start my line, I kinda of wanna start it in. So maybe you wanna measure out three fingers at the top of your paper and do a line on one side of those fingers and a line on the other side of those fingers. That'll be the top of your water, where your waterfall is gonna start. And then as you come down, you want the water to go out. So I'm slowly coming out from that line. So if you can look at mine, you see how it starts at the top and then it comes out at an angle. So I'm gonna do the same thing here on the other side. I'm gonna come out at an angle. So, this is what it looks like so far. All right, next, I wanna add a couple of mountains in my background. So remember I said that these bushes are in my foreground. That's why they look so big, because they're close to me. And that's why the water here got a little bit bigger than at the top, because it's coming close to me. So I wanna draw some small mountains in the back because they're very far from me. So here are my mountains. So like I said, they look very tiny because they're far away. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is add movement. So by adding a series of lines into our art, we can create what's called movement into our art. 
All right, so we wanna add some color and texture to show movement. So in the background, I'm gonna add some line texture. So in these mountains, I wanna show kind of like a, a rough texture. So I'm gonna do some zigzag lines on each side just to create some texture on my rocks or maybe they're even trees very far off in this, the distance. So I'm adding my zigzag lines. Maybe I wanna add some blue too. I'm gonna use a dark blue. I'm gonna add some more of those zigzag lines. So we're just creating a little bit of texture in our art. Okay, this is where if you were doing um, marker and crayon, you would wanna be doing these textures with marker, okay? But I'm using crayon because I'm using watercolor. All right, next, I wanna add some texture in my rocks. So I'm gonna use my black and I'm gonna come down and I wanna just make some curves kind of little curves in my rock to kind of show that my rock has some texture. And maybe I'm gonna come back and use some brown to add some, um, I'm gonna kind of mirror those same lines that I made, but use a brown too to kind of give it some more depth. Maybe add a couple more. So we're giving texture and movement. All right, the next thing we wanna do is we wanna add some texture to our water. So I'm gonna use a couple of different colors of blue. So I have three different color blues and I'm gonna make it wavy. So I wanna make some wavy lines in my water. This is just helping give our art some movement instead of just coloring it in. All right, the last thing we need to do is our little bushes at the bottom. So we're gonna wanna add some color. So maybe it's fall and you wanna turn some of your trees or your bushes orange and red, um, maybe to give it some contrast, or maybe you want to have them bright green. So I'm gonna do, um, how about some yellow and green just to give it where it's maybe just starting to change colors. So I'm gonna add some green into my bushes. And I'm just kind of copying that curved line that I made on the bush to create this texture. So, just adding those little curved lines. I'm gonna go back and add um, some light green. And when I come back, I'll use some yellow and green paint in here to kind of give it that yellow green look. So I'm just adding that texture right now with my crayon. All right, so next we're gonna add our watercolor. All right, so now it's time to add my paint. I'm gonna be adding some brown to the rocks. So I'm gonna use some brown and some orange to kind of give them a different look. So here's my brown paint. And I'm gonna add in some orange to kind of give it a orange tint. So I'm kind of mixing this brown and this orange. So I'm gonna finish my rocks and then I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so I've added the color to my rocks here. 
and it hasn't finished drying yet, but I'm sure you can see that I kind of mix the orange and the brown to kind of give it some extra texture. So now I'm gonna move on to my green at the bottom. And remember I said I was gonna use some green and some yellow to kind of make it a yellow green. So I'm gonna add some green watercolor. And some yellow. So I'm kind of making it like a yellow green at the bottom. So let me finish painting those bushes and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so I went ahead and I mixed my yellow and my green and made my trees at the bottom or my, my bushes at the bottom to look um, kind of like a light green. I decided to make my mountains in the back kind of lush mountains. So a lot of times when we draw mountains, you, you typically see them drawn with black or stone mountains, but sometimes mountains can also have um, things growing on them. So I decided to make mine green as if something was growing on them. So now I'm starting to add the color to my water. So I'm mixing two different blues. I'm using a dark blue paint, and then I'm also trying to use a light blue paint. Um, so kind of trying to mix them a little bit onto my paper. and I will show you what it looks like when I'm done. All right, so I've added all of my watercolor. The last thing I wanna do is I wanna go back in with my darker blue shade, and I want to add some more detail in. So I'm gonna come back in and create some shadows in the art. So what I'm gonna do is right near the base of each of these um, lines, I'm gonna kind of create some shadow to kind of show that it's falling. Whoops, just ripped my paper. Make sure you wait until it's dry. Um, to make sure that you show kind of like some shadows of the water falling. try to kind of keep doing it in that curvy motion. All right, so there is my waterfall. I hope you enjoyed making this landscape and maybe you come up with some of your own unique ideas. Maybe you add some flower to your bushes, some flowers to your bushes. Maybe you add um, a little bird flying through. So be creative and I will see you next week.